How are we doing, folks? Welcome back to the channel. Now, I was having a conversation last night with uh, Gareth Owen on Facebook, and he was saying that I should do a project that showcases what I can do that's a bit more me. Uh, and I was up till about four o'clock in the morning thinking about this ridiculous idea that I've got in my head. And today is the day we're going to make a we'll start on this massive project that I've come up with to um, to raise the bar a little bit on what I can do with this old lathe no CNC basic tools and mathematics so let me show you what I'm gonna do so I don't know how well you can see this on the screen but what we've got here is a mathematical representation of a spirograph you remember spirographs from when we were kids? You get your pencil and you run it round inside this circle track with a little cog and it makes these wonderful patterns. Well, I'm wondering if I can make this but out of wood and massive. So this will be 21 inches across. So let's draw it out. We're going to have a big circle, 21 inches across. and we're going to have a smaller circle in here now the dimensions of this is four to seven four sevenths everything's four sevenths so there's going to be teeth in the outside of this big cog and there's going to be teeth on the outside of the little cog and what's going to happen is this cog is going to roll around the inside of the big cog and there's going to be a hole here where my router is going to fit over the top there's also going to be a hole in the center of this cog and a track that goes around like that and so the router is going to be following this path as the cog rolls around the inside there we go, beautiful now if we look at this this ratio of 4 to 7 and depending on where that hole is gives you this beautiful flower motif and the idea is that I would route out this channel and then I'm going to fill it with epoxy and make some wonderful colors in there and then I'm going to change the position of this hole to one that's closer to the center and that's going to give me this pattern more elongated around the center so they'll be overlaid over each other and I want this central motif to be blocks of wood glued in to that channel so you've got layers, this will all be obviously wood epoxy on the big flower and then this helix I'm hoping to do two different types of wood that uh, in a mosaic pattern, pattern helical around each other and make one enormous fantastic platter that's the plan ambitious can I pull it off with a 60 year old lathe and a hundred year old pillar drill and uh, some basic tools well you have to stay tuned to find out so first job we need to make a very round, very flat, 21 inch platter.
Okay, folks. I thought there was enough wood in there. It looked a bit thin on one side, which was here. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I might have to put something in there because that's going to fall out, but we'll deal with that when we get to it. Should make life a bit easier on the bandsaw anyway, cutting it out. So let's go and do that. lined up to me. Let's drill a hole in it. Beautiful. <clears throat> okay, I now need to drill my centre hole. I need to drill it now, because if I don't, I'll never get it square. And it's important that it's exactly centred, because this is going to be the centre point for all the other holes that I drill in the outside of this to make the teeth. So this is probably the most important hole on the whole project. Don't mess it up, Will. It's got to have this dowel going through it for my drilling rig that I haven't made yet. Alrighty folks, we're back on the lathe finally. What do you reckon Gareth? Is it ambitious enough for you? Have I bitten off more than I can chew? More than likely. Um, let me know what you think. Whether or not it's possible. Uh, it's not going to be without its challenges, definitely. A couple of sleepless nights, what do you reckon? So we are spinning on the lathe at 425 RPM at the moment, just getting the piece round. Now it was a little bit out of balance left to right, so as I turned the front face uh, it got more in balance and then it went more out of balance again as the weight shifted to the back of the piece. But it wasn't long before we speeded up to 800 RPM. Now luckily I've got a lot of work to do on this piece um, before I need to put it back on the lathe again. And in that time I'm going to modify that tool rest somehow so I can get it closer to the piece. Should have done it before, but didn't. Here we are. Captain Overhang strikes again. There we go, I've just speeded it up to 800 now.
Tried to cut it backwards a little bit, wasn't having any of it. So I ended up uh, pull cutting it, which worked uh, worked quite well. And then I made myself a 40 grit sanding block. The idea being if you can sand both sides of the blank at the same time, you know it's square. That worked quite well. Didn't need the whole thing to be flat at this point, just the uh, the outside area where I'm going to be um, drilling. So it's time to put the mortise in, 88 millimeters. And that's the back done, for now. And we've come to the time of the show where we get to showcase some of your fantastic work. And we've got a really good one today. I like this one a lot. This is Middle Barn Woodwork. And he's done, I think this is a lockdown project. It's a, uh, it's a lawn chair made out of recycled pallets. And as pallet work goes, that's, that's pretty good. I like all the dowel work. Very nice. I'm not sure who that guy is, but seems pretty pleased with his chair enjoying himself in his garden and if you look at the next picture you can see the the lawn tractor that time forgot buried <laughs> buried in the garden so if you'd like your work to be featured on the show you can email your images to willmakeseverything at gmail.com Okay, so we're time to work on the front face. This is the face that I'm going to be drilling into. And this is where all the imbalance was. So I'm just working on the very outside, trying to take off the, the out of balance areas. I was listening to The Beard, uh, his podcast, uh, his um, Tuesday Night Live, and they were talking about the Pro Edge and what belts they use. And Wayne said, uh, Wayne the Woodturner said he uses a 150. And I said, wow, that's coarse. Um, but actually, you're right. You're right, Wayne. You don't really need to go any higher than 150. The uh, if you put a super super sharp edge on as Wayne was saying you just take it off by burnishing it off with the piece so I need to get myself some 150 and maybe some 240 grit belts for my semi pro edge so I, char I sharpened this chisel today with the 150 and uh, I only sharpened it once, once on each side and it held its edge. I was pleased with that. Okay, so this is the end of narration mode. And I'll uh, take the opportunity to say thanks everybody for subscribing and uh, thanks for watching the video. If you've enjoyed it, then um, hit the old like button and subscribe and all that good stuff. Uh, there's plenty of extra content coming up, so keep watching for that, and uh, I will catch you on tomorrow's video. Cheers, folks. So that's all the turning done for one day.
This is flat, apart from here, but that's flat. We've got this big hole here. I'm going to have to fill with something. This is just about attached. I'm going to put my circle making jig on and show you where the, the line of the teeth is going to be cut and why we need to fill that hole. Come on. Get around there. Okay. Let's measure that. We're looking for exactly 50 centimeters, which on this tape measure is going to read 60. Yeah, we're within half a mil. That'll diddly do, won't it? So that's our line that we're going to draw our holes on. That's all we got. Alrighty, so for today's extra content, I'm going to show you how to turn that into that. I got an order for a couple of spatulas, and as you can see, this is exactly what I made them out of. It's a piece of sycamore, which is good for kitchen utensils because it has closed pores. It's a nice light hardwood. So first thing you've got to do is cut it cut it out like that on the bandsaw or however you want to cut it out. And I'm going to be using my five inch disc attachment to profile all these edges. So let's do that. Alright, so we're nearly there. A little bit of hand sanding required. Okay, so you might be wondering what kind of finish do you use on a spatula? And the answer is Osmo Top Oil. Not only is it food safe, it also goes into the pores, sets hard, and 
it's vegetarian possibly vegan so if you're making this kind of thing for that kind of shop that's the finish to use And there you have it, one custom made vegan amazing sycamore spatula.